Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk back again with you guys for another show for another episode of our Raw Reaction series and specifically the Arsenal News Show. Good morning, guys. I hope you're well. I hope you're doing good on the day before Arsenal finally play their game. It's been so long, um, but thankfully we are getting back to regular scheduling and regular programming. It is the day before the game, which does mean that we're going to provide you with a preview show a little bit later on this evening. So make sure you do tune in around 8 p.m. UK time to get that content. We'll be covering plenty of of the match against Crystal Palace with some of the members, which you can find in our Discord server. If you'd like to join, all you need to do is become a member and become an expert or a TGT ambassador. So do go click the link in the description if you'd like to get involved with future shows. But good morning to everybody in the chat box. Colin, Ramsey, Kaiser, Senele. Uh, apologies if I've pronounced that wrong. Rich, Matt, Christopher, um, Paul, uh, we've got Fala, we've got John. Good morning, guys, in the in the chat box, Drew, as well. Um, thank you all so much for tuning in. Do drop a like if you have not done so already on today's video. And also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And also go and subscribe to the Arsenal Way. Uh, we upload over there plenty more content from football.london, um, including 9.30 a.m. shows every Monday to Friday. We upload all of Arteta's press conferences and the press conferences of the opposition managers as well. Interviews with journalists. I'll be uploading a video over there a little bit later on today talking to Football.London's Crystal Palace correspondent for the preview show on the Arsenal way. So make sure you're subscribed over there with the link in the description to get all of that extra additional Arsenal content. Now, we start off by talking about Mavra Panos scoring yesterday, which obviously was a big thing for him. Stuttgart getting... I mean, it's obviously they would have liked to have got the win. They couldn't quite do that. Like Bavra Panos getting the goal is obviously fantastic for him and seeing him get on the score sheet. What the only thing about this is for us is that we're probably not going to see any of the benefits of this whatsoever because the the clause in the contract is basically an option to buy, which is an obligation as long as they don't get relegated. If they get relegated, then what will happen is is that Stuttgart will have to have an option in which they can choose whether or not they want to pay, I think it's around 3 million quid to bring in Maverick Panos, which is not a lot of money for a player that, to be honest, is worth just way, way, way more than that. But they got a 1-1 draw yesterday against Borussia Mönchengladbach. He went 1-0 up with a Konstantinos Maverick Panos goal in the 15th minute, but a Jonas Hoffman equaliser stole the points in the end for Gladbach. Probably wasn't stealing the points, but you know what I mean. It was a, a good goal by Mavropanos, but didn't in the end get them the win, but he was happy to post on his Instagram a little bit later that they were happy to get the point and happy for him to score his first goal for the club. Now, I'm really happy about uh, Manu, who is one of our listeners, who has basically become our Belgian and Netherlands uh, correspondent. Uh, he's actually got a job working and covering plenty of games out in Belgium and in the Netherlands. And he was watching and covering the final game uh, against RKC yesterday, in which Reese Nelson finally made his debut for final. Uh, he came off the bench and uh, thankfully Manu has provided a brilliant breakdown of Reese Nelson's performance, which I'm going to read through to you now. Um he says he came on in the uh, he came on at two two. And RKC was already going to dig in deep. Reese was really looking to show slot and a slot the final manager why he should play. And he made two clear cut chances in his first five minutes. One he took on his weak foot himself, which he almost converted, and the other he laid on for a B Tech Sinistera in Dessas, who could have converted five or six chances, but just didn't look confident at all. After five minutes of good football, RKC just sucked all of the football out of the game, and Reese got moved to the number 10 position and tried to make some lovely one-twos happen. But even with 10 minutes of added time, the only exciting thing that happened was him getting yellow card for standing up to his new teammates after getting mobbed. Uh, so to recap, he looked lively. Great chemistry of Ma uh, Malassia on the left. Can't say that if he would work uh, if, he, if he would work in the, kind of that number 10 position because there is genuinely zero football in those last 30 minutes of the game. He did all he could to prove on of slot that he is willing to work hard wherever the coach tells him to. So a massive thank you to Manu, who I know you see pop up in our chat box quite often 
often, who is working out in the Netherlands and in Belgium, covering plenty of football, for providing us with an in-depth look at how Reese Nelson got on in finals 2-2 draw yesterday with RKC. He also, very thankfully, provided the translation for Arna Slot's comments after the game, which I'll read through to you now. Arna Slot, the final coach, said... After only one week of real training and having only played just 45 minutes against an under-21 side in four months, uh, I feel like Reese was the only one looking to create something, and he did. Yes, his lack of minutes showed, but he was clearly threatening and active around the box. But unfortunately, even he couldn't force the three to the game, of course, ending with that two to draw. So really positive. Now, we are going to be covering Reese Nelson, hopefully with another monthly update every single month uh, with some of the guys over in the final podcast. And uh, we'll hear even more about his performances every single month in more detail with the statistics as well. We've already uploaded a few of the likes of William Saliba and also Daniel Ballard, who will be covering bi-monthly uh, for Millwall as well. We're hopefully going to be looking to get some content on Hector Bellerin's time at uh, Rail Betis too. So make sure that you're getting all of that great content on the channel. We move on to transfer news. And Noah Lang has continued to be cropping up in the news and linked to Arsenal. This combined with the news that Gabriel Martinelli is there's no plan for Martinelli to leave the club on loan in January. And yet Arsenal are still interested in bringing in a winger if that means that it affects any other of Arsenal's wide players, possibly Nicolas Pepe's future, we will have to wait and see. But it is certainly an intriguing period when Arsenal are looking so heavily to bring in a wide player. The £25 million valuation is standing. It's not deviating. It's not changing, which usually tells you um, that it's a fairly, like, you know, that, that there's clearly interest from Arsenal in this guy. But the discussions... The uh, kind of the offer, there's no offer on the table. There's no discussions officially going on, but the interest is just there right now. I'm looking to bring you a story next week, more about Noah Lang, and we'll keep you updated with what's been going on with him. But whilst those stories do persist, there is yet to be an official offer from Arsenal this season. So far ahead of that January window. And we finish the show by talking about Arta Cabral, who is a bar striker and a player that I genuinely have not come across. He has been linked this morning with a move to Arsenal. 23-year-old Brazilian striker. Uh, he moved to Basel from Palmeiras in July of 2020. So he's been there for just over a season. But this season, he's already, he's already got a goal in there as well. So 20 goals in 17 games. He looks a really interesting player. Certainly someone that I'm going to have to do a lot more research to find more out about. But Arsenal are said to have an interest in him. They will be looking towards strikers in the summer. Could Arta Cabral be the player that they are looking for? He leaves, it seems a bit of a goal machine for Basel. Is he good enough for Arsenal? That's obviously the big, big question. Um, one thing I would say is that I really do discredit people that turn around and talk about, say, the league and talk specifically about saying, oh, it's a terrible league, blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry, but plenty of players have come from lesser leagues around Europe and absolutely smashed it in the Premier League. Sadio Mane coming from the Austrian Bundesliga being a massive example of that. It's not about the league. You need to focus on the player. You need to go and watch him before you can make any kind of judgment, before you just disregard this link because of the league that he plays in. Uh, you've got the like, yeah, Mohamed Salah came from the Swiss League. Thank you ever so much. Obviously, formerly of Basel himself. You cannot discredit a player just because of the league. That is simple as that. Um, and that does complete all of the news for today. Thank you ever so much, guys, uh, for tuning in for that. We move on to our second part of the show, which is, of course, our questions, our queries, our theories and thoughts. So if you could throw a question into the chat box, we'll try and go through as many of them as we feasibly can. Let's see what some of you guys are saying then in the chat box. Uh, El Nenny did indeed come from Basel. That's where we bought him from. Uh, I'm trying to think of other Swiss uh, Premier League imports. Let's see if we can find any. A list of Swiss Super League players. Um, that have moved to the Premier League. I mean, I would have loved for them to have produced a better list than what I can see on my screen at the moment because it's it's not telling me anything. Um, it's just current players. It's really hard. Jordan Shakiri, of course, came in for... I think he was Basel as well, was he not? 
Um, I'm sure, I mean, young boys, you talk about the, the Swiss League, young boys beat Manchester United in, in the Champions League just, what, a couple of weeks ago? Can't be that bad if they're going up there and, and beating Manchester United. So there you go. Um, Dumbia, Shakiri, Xhaka. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Matt G says, did we overhype Ivan Tony? Two goals in eight games. I did say and several times that I was going to wait until the end of the season before I made a judgment on Ivan Tony's Premier League status as a player. I'm still going to do that. I'm not going to sit here and say that he's proven me right so far because we still need to see more from him. We will wait until the end of the season whether or not he can translate more of those Premier League appearances into goals. But certainly, he's found it a little bit tough coming straight in. That's for sure. Manoj says, if we've got an offer for Pepe in January, would you accept it? And what would the offer need to be? If we got a £30 million bid for Pepe in January, I would absolutely accept it. One, because he's not even going to be playing for us in January. It's going to be off the African Cup of Nations as well, which will make it quite easier. And just as I think that we can bring in someone who can upgrade us better. I'm not saying that's someone like Noah Lang, but I think that it's if there's an opportunity to get in a lot of money for Pepe, I would take it. And yes, I do think 30 million is a fair price for the player and what he's given us so far in the league. And with the, considering the length of contract he has left on his deal as well, 30 million pounds, I would personally take. Uh, Rich Cosford says, uh, Tom, I like Reese, but I feel like we need to move him on in the summer. I hope he continues to have a good loan spell and we sell him in the summer. I do. There goes the microphone. I don't see him getting into our current team as we go forwards. The thing is about Reese Nelson is that I think when you look at his development alongside someone like Bakai Saka, you see how Emil Smith Rowe has developed so fast for Arsenal. He was always going to find it difficult. So for me, I think that if there is an opportunity to get some good money in for Reese Nelson next summer, you probably have to take it. Um, Amadeep says, Jan Sommer is the keeper that we should have gone for when we went for Burn Leno. Uh, Swiss goalkeeper playing for, I believe, still uh, glad back right now. But we've moved on from there. Neil says, what are your thoughts on Payet's comments on Saliba? We actually covered that in yesterday's show. So if you want to find out my thoughts on Payet's comments on Saliba, you can go and watch yesterday's show because we covered that in some detail. Philip says, I think Pepe will start on Monday with Martin playing in a deeper role. What about you? You'll have to tune in for our preview, Philip, a little bit later on this evening to find out what kind of uh, formation we've gone for. Uh, Rancy Pumpkin says, the problem with the Swiss League is there are only two to three OK teams. The other ones would struggle to stay in the championship. Doesn't matter, Rancy. You judge players based on the player's quality, not on the quality of the league. So I would go and watch a player before disregarding them for the league they play in. Olu says, I will accept 20 million for Pepe as I don't see anyone placing more than that for him considering his contract finishes in 2023. Manoj says, do you feel that we failed some of the HLM players with the lack of successful loans earlier on in their career? I mean, you think of some of the HLM players that have left. Daniel Marlon came through. Obviously, we signed him from Ajax, but he spent time in the academy. Uh, Jeff Rain Adelaide also spent time in the academy. Who else we got? Um, I don't know where it's Serge Gnabry. I'm trying to think of his career prior to coming through at Arsenal. Let's just have a quick look. When did he join the club? Uh, he joined Arsenal in 2011. Uh, was at Arsenal for four years um, between 2012 and 2016 before joining Werder Bremen. If he joined in 2011, that was 10 years ago. So he was uh, he was in the uh, the youth team. Um, so he was part of that that youth side. But he was at plenty of loads of clubs before that. TSV Visak, TS. F. Ditzingen, uh, GSV Hemmingen, uh, SPVGG-Fuerbach, Stuttgart Kickers, Stuttgart Senior Side, and then Arsenal. So he had quite the journey throughout his youth career, it's fair to say. Uh, Mo Valla says, what about a swap deal for Bruno Guimaraes at Lyon? I definitely would be interested in that. Rich says, yeah, that's what I mean. It's unfortunate and he is a decent young lad, but I think Reese Nelson, due to how well some of our youngsters have come along, has fallen behind the 15 to 20 million in the summer for Reese's fun. I think you'll struggle to get that figure. He's got a year left on his deal when he returns from final. I think you'll be looking at 15 and under for possible deals for him. Uh, Vegates says, I'm watching almost all Premier League matches for FPL reasons. I think Ivan Tony is actually better than what stats tell you, doing his defensive duty and taking part in playmaking as well as holding the ball as well. And that's why you can't just simply look at the number of goals a player has scored to make a judgment on them. Actually go and watch them before you just disregard them. Um, BX Gunner says, Tom, do you think Ollie makes it to January? 
I would think he would. I feel like they, I mean, they only just gave him a new contract, did they not? I mean, obviously it's lovely to laugh at Manchester United. We really enjoy doing that, but I don't see why he wouldn't make it. I know that they've got a really difficult month this month and hopefully it's an opportunity now for Arsenal to, to take on Manchester United and try and get above them in the Premier League table. I mean, looking at where they are currently, um, 14 points, Arsenal on. We can go one point behind Man United. With a win. I think we can go one point, two points behind fourth place with a win would be great. Um, that's when you really look at it. I mean, to, to be able to go two points behind fourth place is a really, really interesting. So obviously, Everton have got to play today. They play against West Ham, who are on 11 points. We'd look for a draw, you'd hope, in that game, really. But uh, that's a, it really is interesting how Arsenal are placing. People talk about where we are on the table, but think about how many points we are away from our target right now. That's that's the interesting thing about this season so far. Um, let's go to Paul, who says, will we buy a striker in January? Only if Lacazette goes, would I think we consider buying one? But I just don't see that happening, to be honest. Um, Edro Sass says, I feel like the English tax doesn't apply to Arsenal because we're usually selling players to other continental teams. So it's usually the English tax works when one, it's an English player, and two, when it's an English player moving to another English club or an Eng uh, a player from an English club going to another English club. I mean, look at Joe Willock. £25 million was a good amount of money we got for Joe Willock. So you'd have to say that it did apply in that scenario. He's done nothing so far this season. I know he's had a couple of injuries, but that £25 million is like a great touch for Arsenal so far this season. Oliver Young says, do we think that we should be playing Partey and Lekonga or an Erdogan Smith row Partey on Monday? At some point, we're going to have to properly bed in Lekonga considering the Xhaka injury. Very true, but maybe we'll look to be more creative and attacking playing in a 4-3-3 formation. Tune in for our preview tonight and you'll see what our members and myself have gone for. Philip says, I think Newcastle's performances will pick up even without any new players due to the players wanting now to prove themselves. Mm, Steve Bruce very much under pressure to get results. He knows his job will be under threat. I will be interested how this affects them and if actually it has a negative effect on them until January, we will wait and see. Fala says, what realistic signings are you expecting to be made in January? Signings, I'm not expecting any. I'm honestly not expecting any signings right now. Maybe that will change and we'll bring in like a lone player, but I'm honestly only expecting outgoings. I'm expecting Enketia to go, Kalasinac to go, possibly El Elneny to go. Uh, El Nenny supposedly might even have an agreement with Galatasaray. We're going to be following that story closely. Kalasnac also could be going to Fenerbahce in January. They're looking at possibly terminating his contract. Uh, and Enketia, we know, agreed a deal with Crystal Palace, but he failed to agree personal terms. So he could probably go in January. We will just have to wait and see. It depends on who leaves. If Lacazette or Pepe goes, which I'll be surprised about, then maybe we will move for a player in January, but we would have to wait and see. But you know that we'll be covering all of that stuff with the Arsenal Transfer News show that will be returning as we edge closer to that January window. Thank you ever so much, guys, for tuning in. Please do drop a like on today's video and subscribe to the Guna Talk if you have not done so already. Uh, as I say, there'll be plenty more content coming out today over on the Arsenal Way and, of course, on this channel too with our preview out at around 8pm live. So make sure you tune in for that. Uh, make sure you check out some of the players that we've been linked to. Go and watch them before judging based upon the league they play in. And other than that, it's been an absolute pleasure to join you as it always is. And as always, up the Arsenal.